Yeah, man. So uh, um, when an artist is on the come up, uh, one of the ways that they could quote unquote get on is by featuring a bigger artist, right? Um, how would you advise artists to approach bigger artists for a feature? There's a couple of ways. You could pay for it. Uh, I, I don't think it's bad to pay for it as long as you have a strategy behind it. Because it's no different than um, you know a startup company yeah. paying influencers right. to, to market their, their product or their merch or, or whatever. That's and right. that works. It's a, it's a good idea if it's a good fit. If it's for a your good brand. Fit and if the, the bigger artist or whomever, whichever artist you're trying to connect with uh, also agrees to help you promote the song. Because I, I feel like a lot of these artists sometimes just hop on the verse and then that's it. They don't, you know. Yeah, um, I guess it's different in that respect. So if you have a product and you come to agreement with an influencer uh, to promote it, then obviously, like, this, that's probably written in the contract somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I guess it depends on how big the artist is. Okay. Uh, if they're big enough where you can just use their name and that's going to get you extra views, um, it's probably going to be a lot more for that. That price is going to be a lot more for you to hire them mm. um, because like they're, they're providing that extra marketing, so they're going to build that in. Okay. Um, whereas if you didn't build that in and you just like you knew enough about advertising mm -hmm. uh, that you could just take advantage of that within yep. your ads, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't pay for that up front. Huh. I actually would just use their name huh. and then I'd slap that on the ads so myself uh, and then I'd get those people you know into my my own funnels my my followers uh, on my website and, yeah. and all that stuff yeah so that's one way you could just pay them yeah the other way would be um, fostering the relationship with them so back to the analogy of a, a startup looking for influencers. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times startups will just send the influencers some material, some merch or whatever they got going on. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll just do it for free. Yeah. And if the if the influencer likes it, then they they may post it. You know, you can write an email to them or a DM or whatever. Like, hey, if you do like it, um, you know, feel free to post it. It yeah. would really help us out. We're a startup and all, all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, now it's best to do that as a warm lead mm -hmm. and not just cold so you have cold calling where it's just you know you, you're just going into somebody's dm and you're just giving this cold message and they don't know who you are mm -hmm. uh whereas if you showed like we talked about before if you show that you are a supporter of them first mm -hmm. and their brand and you um maybe just promote some of their stuff or feature some of their stuff or do what you can to help them yeah you know, leave really good comments mm -hmm. um interact with their channel and it can't just be hitting the like button it really does have to be comments yeah um or like if you have a little bit of a platform yourself then you're like you know talking about them on your platform or you're mm -hmm. boosting them up and mm -hmm. you're like oh man this this song that came out from so-and-so was great this is why i liked it you know give them really good feedback yeah um that can be your your warm lead into asking them for a favor later mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and Again, we went over this problem in previous videos. It can't just be like you do that one time. Yeah. It's usually you do that over a month. Um, I'll say at least a month. Okay. You know, at least a month of being consistent, a consistent uh, community community member of their brand. Yeah. And then you can ask them uh, for some favors um, if for for them to wear your merch in a post or a story or you, a video. You think these artists are actually seeing some of those comments and interactions from, you know, such a, a smaller individual who who might be in the midst of other floods of comments and stuff like that? What you think? It depends on how big the person is. Okay. Like don't go after Kylie Jenner. Yeah. Like <laughs> you gotta so you gotta adjust your strategy to yeah, how big do the it, person is. You can do this in stages. Go after Maybe sm smaller artists with traction first, and then some medium, small, medium size. Okay. You know, thirty thousand followers mm -hmm. up to a hundred thousand, maybe, or you know, you could make the brackets whatever you want. Thirty thousand to seventy thousand followers. Um, you know, this is how many times we can comment on their stuff. Okay. And then you got seventy thousand to a hundred thousand or one hundred fifty thousand. Okay. You know, they get a little more traction. You know, so on and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. 
that's a good tiered system that to, is. to start going after people. Um, and again, like it's be genuine. Just don't go after them just because you want something. Yeah. Like don't just see it for for what you want from them. See, see if you have some merch or something that is really good merch and you think the, the message is great and it's going to fit with this this brand or you have this product uh, that you really do believe in and you think that their users really would like it yeah um those are the people you comment on you don't just comment on everybody like yeah. if we if we have like our our brand right is um non-explicit content or about promoting uh music of all genres mm -hmm. uh but you know we just don't do explicit content if we tried to make a brand partnership with an artist who literally every song they have is explicit. Like, that's not a good fit. Like, yeah, we just wouldn't. We just wouldn't try to contact that person. Yeah, yeah. Um. So that's that's my advice on that. Yeah, it's good.